Hi, my name is Keith Cooper from No Flight Images and this is one of my series of short videos about aspects of the business side of photography. And um, in this particular example, I'm looking at what skills are needed to be a professional photographer. Um, and will skill get you by? And I'll give you the quick answer. No, you need skills and marketing because if you those skills are not seen by anyone or appreciated by anyone then how are you going to get any work and as i've mentioned in many of the videos that i've done the essence of being a professional photographer is that you are running a business to make a profit so if your business doesn't make a profit it's not going to be a business very long now as part of uh, my business I've looked at the business of many other photographers in different fields and I've looked at ones that seem to be doing okay and ones that don't necessarily seem to be doing that well. It's very difficult to tell because if you just look at a website, um, you can anyone can put up a great looking website. Uh, it doesn't actually tell you much, but there are other ways you can look at business. Uh, you can look at uh, if it's a limited company, you can look at their accounts and various things like that. Now, I don't normally go into this detail that much. Um, Karen does that. Uh, she looks after a large amount of North Lights marketing. Uh, that's great because whilst I don't mind doing some of it, um, I'm inclined to let it slide. And this is a problem that uh, many photographers have, is that rather than thinking of doing their marketing as a continuous thing that you do a bit of every so often, they think it's something you do in burst. Oh, I think we'll do some marketing this week and then we'll sort of leave it be for a while and we'll come back in a few weeks time, months time, whatever, and have another look at it. No, marketing needs to be something that's continuous and is behind almost everything you do for the business. Um, so it's, uh, it's pervasive as well. Now, in businesses I've looked at, um, there's a certain, fact, you look at famous photographers. Um, you know, it's all easy to think when you see um, various photographers, uh, you see examples of their work or discussions about them. It's easy to think, well, they're famous, they just get work. No, they don't. They've almost always got there by hard work. And in many ways, a lot of people's approach to social media is a, try, a way of trying to circumvent the need for lots of hard work, lots of leg work, lots of dull, boring stuff. Um, yeah, that's, that's why I equate social media success with winning the lottery. Sure, people do it. It's just unlikely to be you, uh, certainly not something to rely on. Something that if you can find a relevant part of it, it's great. But anyway, I've looked at that elsewhere. Remember too that famous photographers, you see, their fame is now part of their brand and their marketing. That's part of how they get work. They've developed a brand and there may not actually be much substance behind some of these brands, but if they work, they work. You can in some ways measure success by repeat clients. Um, it takes a lot more work to get a new client than it does to get more work from an existing client. Look at people who have consistent work histories. Um, you may be, if, if you want to look in different fields, I mean, obviously I'm in sort of engineering, architectural photography and things like that. There's less of that, but certainly if you look at fashion, uh, if you look at lots of other types of photography, you'll be able to see the kinds of work that people do and see what they get. And always there is some skill there. Although when you get to a certain point, you can import additional skill. Uh, you have minions for you. Um, it used to be uh, a minion job was reloading film into uh, film magazines. Uh, now there are lots of other minion jobs. Uh, well, there aren't that many because photography is very difficult to get jobs in. But, you know, these are things to start out on. But you import, when you're famous enough, you can import people to do stuff like that. Uh, you do the grand stuff. Um, you go to the meetings. You, you discuss concepts and things like that. Uh, talking of concepts... Um, even photographers who make a big thing of their, their art, their vision, 
that is still marketing. Look at it in terms of how they are using that to market their services. Now, they might not like calling it their services, but it's much like deciding, you know, I, I'm, let's say, I'm, yeah, I'm fed up of being known as Keith Cooper. I'll change my name for photographic purposes to something else, or we'll just call myself Cooper. Um, now, to me, that's the height of pretension, um, single word names, um, but if it works, it works, and it's a brand. Now, I wouldn't be comfortable with stuff like that, and in the markets I'm in, um, taking photographs of buildings and the likes like that, um, it really doesn't matter that much. I can see certainly in other areas it would make a difference. So uh, whilst I may smile when I see some people, uh, you know, with some famous photographers, I do realise what's going on behind that and what's being done. Good work alone is not its own marketer. You need to help it. So just being a great photographer is only a small part of being a successful professional photographer and making a living, making a profit from it. So when you look at others and you think, what am I going to do for my own work? First of all, and I've, I've talked about what sorts of work you might do, specializations and things like that. But the key to this is knowing your clients, knowing your potential clients, who they are, where they are and what they want. Because if you can't provide stuff that they want, why would they hire you? If you solve problems for them, produce work that is useful to them, then there is every chance they will hire you again. And that's, as I've said before, it's easier to get repeat work than it is to get completely new work from a new client. What you need to know is what do clients work? What do they want? Um, most people, when they visit a website, for example, um, and you're designing a website for people to, you know, for your, for your uh, photography business or whatever. Think that most people are immensely selfish. They are there for their own benefit. They are not there for your benefit as a photographer. So, they're always looking in the what's in it for me angle. You have to meet their needs and fill in what they want. Simple example here, um, a couple of photographs taken of the same building. Now, this one's quite extreme and very geometric. This is the sort of one that um, architects might quite like, have on the wall, uh, an interesting one. This picture here, the strong leaning over touch style, is much more beloved of people in marketing. And uh, you can see, if you, if you look at a, um, a professional photographer's website that claims to do architecture, if they have quite a few pictures with true verticals in them, and maybe one or two at what I call wacky angles, then you know they prob that's probably what they do. Um, I try and find who I'm working for, who is going to use the images, because I find images like this, the architect might like. Images like this, the marketing department might like. So know who you're doing work for, provide answers for both of them. So that, that's it, it really, and I'm, I'm saying as a as part of this is that skill is essential, but it counts for nothing without proper marketing. Anyway, I hope these little videos are of interest and of use to people. Uh, please do leave some questions uh, if you like, and please subscribe to the channel as well. Um, let me know what you like, and I'll produce some more of them, as well as the camera and printing and, uh, and the general photography type stuff as well. So uh, thank you for watching, and uh, goodbye.